Once the church pierces the veil, the earth makes progress. You ready for some crazy stuff? From 1908 all the way until like the 1970s, 90% of all the inventions that were ever made were actually made and patented between, the, uh, between 08 and uh, the 1960s. Beginning in the 1970s, knowledge began to double at the rate now of seven, it doubles every seven years, it multiplies two times. That's why your iPhone, your computer, that's why this technology you got is obsolete a year later, knowledge is doubling every seven years. You know what that tells me? The path of the just gets brighter and brighter. Every level of principality and world rule we break through releases the minds of men to another level of glory. You're a constructive force for the enlightenment of the world. You are not some relic from the dark ages clinging on to something that doesn't work. Every time the church pierces a veil, makes an initiation through a change into the next level and transitions its head and its heart, it releases new potential into the church and the earth, and the earth actually becomes more, it has access to more illumination. This may not have been the way you were taught history, but this is a fact. Right now, kaboom, we're hitting something. How many of you know we're hitting our, our noodle on something? Kabing, kabing, we're hitting something. I believe what's happening right now is after we have the release of, once this veil is pierced, well, this is the amazing thing, catch this, catch, catch this. Once Luther broke through here, justification by faith no longer became a phenomena that happened after this monk is fasting and praying 40 days and he's beating himself up and he's reading and he's got the Bible in Hebrew and he's got it in Greek. I mean, this man Luther paid a terrible price to have peace with God, but you know why? Because when there's a prevailing veil over something, you're hitting resistance. It's, you, don't, you don't have what's called critical mass until faith has owned the territory on the other side. Now what happened was, you know, people go, well, if Luther had only really understood, you just gotta believe by faith. Well, it wasn't that easy, Mr. Smarty Pants. <laughs> he was trying more than you. He was hitting this thing. He was hitting the spirit. Once he pierced through, this is amazing. This goes into like quantum physics. We don't wanna go there right now. It goes to the idea of the hundredth monkey, but I'll tell you about the monkey. This is fascinating. <laughs> There's a species of monkey that is off the island of Japan that's being studied by like National Geographic types people. They're watching an island that has never been contaminated or corrupted by human beings. And so they have these cameras and they're watching the behavior of these, of, of these monkeys, these particular species monkeys in this natural habitat. And they decided while they're observing them with film, what would happen if they added one thing to the equation? One thing, just change one thing, see how it affected the whole ecology of this island. They added a potato, sweet potato. They put potatoes in boxes on the island at night, boom, they took off their watch and the monkeys. The monkeys didn't know what to do with the potatoes because they go smell them, they pick them up, but they had sand all over them and stuff like that, so they spit them out. One young enterprising monkey, the next generation monkey actually, took the potato, kicked it into the water and was playing with it. Kicked it around in the water, then picked it up out of the water, no sand on it, bit it, and now it had a nice salty sweet potato taste. It's eating it and enjoying it, it's showing off its new skill. Interesting thing that happens is a couple of other monkeys start to follow the behavior. Next thing you know, the entire island is practicing a new possibility. See, what happens when you break through a barrier, you open up access to a new possibility, but that's not the crazy part. You ready for the crazy part? <laughs> this is the crazy part. An island 20 miles away, they're doing the same study on. As soon as this monkey broke through the barrier, a thousand years of monkey eating habits just shifted. It was like psychic email went from this island to that. The other island monkeys started practicing the same skill. Did you catch that? This other island of monkeys, they don't have email with these monkeys. It's not like, hey, try kicking it in the water. It tastes better that way. It's like they're practicing it, which tells you something. In the quantum arena, we ought to know. Once a veil is pierced, it releases access anywhere to the same revelation. It's true for monkeys, true for us. Once Luther pierced the veil, do you know what happens? I read one time, I read, I, I, I had a, a bout of pleurisy pneumonia. I got laid up in, you know, my, I remember I was reading Daubigny's History of the Reformation. You guys ought to all get this. It's a ponderous work. I didn't read the whole thing, but if you want to really be intelligent on the Reformation, read Daubigny's History of the Reformation. The guy's brilliant French historian. He chronicles in a book this thick, the doctor said I was going to, have to, you know, spend the summer reading it for 13 weeks, but I was reading his book because I was laid up. I wasn't well. And I'm reading a book. Here's the amazing insight of Daubigny. At the moment that Luther pierces the veil, at that same moment in the journals of the other reformers, they were piercing the same veil. 
which meant Luther was the hundredth monkey that created the tipping point. There's certain critical mass. He pierced something and it broke through throughout Europe. Had Luther not led the Reformation, it would have been led by Zwingli or by two other men because they all got the revelation right after Luther pierced the veil in the quantum realm. Boom. That means that once the church pierces in Azusa Street, globally, getting filled with the Spirit and speaking in tongues is a new possibility. Up until then, remember what was going on. People are tarrying, they're praying, they're tarrying. It's like Luther trying to get saved. And you're saying right now, hey, it's not that hard. Yeah, it's not that hard for you, Mr. Smarty Pants. Back then, they couldn't break through because it was a veil. Does this make sense to you? I'm talking about the big, the, this is the macro version of what, what the battle is for our generation right now. But what happens is, how many of you notice you can go anywhere in the world right now, and you can virtually, Bob Weiner, my gosh, this guy can go anywhere. He can, he can sneeze in the lobby of a hotel in Singapore, people are getting saved. People can get saved anywhere. It's not as hard as when Luther had it. Why? Because once you reach critical mass on a revelation, everyone gets access easily to what was once contested territory. You with me on this? How about getting filled with the Spirit? You know you can go in. I just was down in Cabo, Cabo Mexico. I just had, did, a, did a trip there, 140, 150 people. I'm training them in business. My team is there. Something happens. The assistant manager of the resort gets whacked by the Spirit. He's crying. He's supposed to be checking on my seminar. He's crying. It's a five-star resort. We're making sure the seminar is going. He's crying. We realize the Spirit of God is touching him. I'm talking about God's going into all the kingdoms of the world. And I got the manager of the resort crying. So we bring him over and pray for him. Boom, he's on the floor. I've lost my manager. He's on the floor. We put, him, we put him on the prayer team. He had more anointing on him than the rest of us. So we put him to work praying for people. The lady comes in. Her husband's an attorney. He speaks Spanish. He, doesn't, he didn't want to come to my meeting because he thought I was kind of a whack person. So, but he's checking up when it's over. He's, he's impatient. He's gone. He wants to get his wife. Come on. You know, it's a five-star resort. I don't want to spend all day here. He comes in. He doesn't speak a word of English. I don't speak a word of Spanish. So we sent the manager over to go pray for him. The manager doesn't know what he's doing. He just goes up to him and says, stand right there. He starts praying for him. The guy goes into a trance for 45 minutes. I was getting nervous. I thought we were going to have to use one of those refrigerator lifts to move him out of the room. He was frozen like this. This is where this movement is going. When the thing is done after that, uh, we, we, you know, we, we have a, someone wants to get water baptized, we get water baptized. Most of these people are, you know, God-fearing, intelligent, business evangelicals. My wife yells out, do you pray in tongues? I look at her, I go, what's the matter with you? It's too late. The cat's out of the bag. The guy who's, I just water baptized, he goes, I don't pray in tongues. She says, come over here. I send him over here. Boom, he's praying in tongues. Next thing you know, it's like this hundredth monkey thing. Everybody, want, everybody that goes in wants to pray in tongues. So I have all 10 people in my seminar. Then I got... Ten of them over there, they're all filled with spirit. Now I got a crowd over here, and I'm realizing these people here probably want it. They got their evening suits on, they're going to dinner and stuff like that. The Lord says, tell them if they're really hungry, jump in the pool. I tell them, I got a whole boom, the whole army of people flashing in the pool. I said, come to me, lift up your hands, pray. And I got them all praying in tongues. Manager of the resort, the lawyer who was frozen, comes out of being frozen. He comes in, he's in the group praying in tongues. This is just this weekend. What I'm saying is that now you can get people saved, you can get them filled with a spirit, and you can start moving prophetically and prophesying over them anywhere in the world. You know why? Because all three realms are accessible. The church has got territory there. Therefore, a tipping point, critical mass is what we call it. You can go anywhere and you can do that.